let's go to Canada. Harvey, no pronouns, is a theist and wants to know why we are so convinced that there isn't a God. Hey, Harvey, you're talking with SR and Seth. Uh, is that kind of the gist of what you're asking? Yeah, actually, as, uh, first of all, I just want to say I really enjoy your show. I've been listening to it for, for years, not real consistently, but I've, you know, every now and then I'll search you up on YouTube or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, that was my main question is why, you're, why are you so convinced there's not a God or any concept of God? But as I've been listening to your show tonight, I actually have a, a lot more questions, although I'm not sure we'll have time to get to all of them. <laughs> yeah, probably probably won't. We'll, we'll try to tackle this one as best we can, though. Um, Seth, why, why are you so convinced that there isn't a God? If, well, if I mean, that's which God do you think I would be is most convincing? Like, mm. you obviously want to lean me in a certain direction. Which God are you talking about? Well, that's a good question. I mean, to, to be honest, uh, I call myself a theist, but I don't even know if you could call, if you could call me that. Um, maybe I'm more of an agnostic or an agnostic theist, or you know, even a deist in some sense. Because I don't, I I tend to agree with you guys. You know, when you say you know, uh, or when you look at God as this being of almost like a hierarchy where he's the judge and command the judge and commander and the ruler of all things. But it's all people get this idea that it's almost like this old man in the clouds. Um, I don't really picture God like that. I mean, there's, I, I'm not entirely convinced what God is. I don't think any of us could tr can truly know what God is until we experience it. Um, you, but you, you know, you and I have so I much like, in common. Yeah. yeah Harvey. Right. Right. You yeah, and I have I so much so. in common, yeah. right? I'm not convinced. I haven't really seen anything. If you find something out that's testable, call me mm -hmm. and we'll talk. You and I have that in common. And until somebody makes a demonstrable proof of a God, well, then you and I are kind of in the same boat. There's no good reason to believe it. Therefore, we are non-believers in gods. I think you might be an atheist. I don't know. I'm not going to stick okay. on a label. Maybe but... I am. Maybe I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, I mean, come on. You said it, Harvey. You said, hey, look, you know, people talk about this thing and nobody really kind of knows what it is and we don't really have good explanation and stuff. And it's like, yeah, yeah, just stop right there, brother. Like, I'm I'm right with you. You know, if if we looked at if we looked at anything else in existence from that perspective, it'd be like, yeah, I don't. I'm not convinced by that, and it's like, well, why? It's like, well, we've we've got no we've got no reason to. You, you know, you just said nobody really seems to know what the descriptions are for it. Even if we don't, if we can't even define it accurately, how can we then take the next step to say we believe it, we accept that it exists, and even more so, how do we then from there say here's the things that it actually wants us to do? So. No, absolutely. I think, <laughs> to be honest, I think I agree with you guys more than I disagree with you guys. But where I was, I was going with that um, was, <laughs> you you know, one concept of God that I kind of have taken liking to, or that seems more reasonable to me, is I don't know if you've ever, has ever listened to Alan Watts. I've heard the name. No, he uh, he wrote a series. He yeah, he wrote a series of books. Anyways, he talks about God. He advocates for something known as atheism in the name of God. It's a very interesting concept where he talks about, you know, whatever you want to call God is just this eternal force that drives the universe or that works through all things in the universe. Okay. So you know, a kind of spinoza -y type God, kind of, kind of that type of thing, like the yeah. universe itself. Um, is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Cause I have problems with that kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm even convinced on that enough to say no. It's just, it's just the universe itself. I, I like the idea of not putting an image on God. Yeah, I and I, I understand why that feels so comfortable. I understand why. And when again, when I was a believer, I didn't have a picture of you know some big burly bearded dude or anything sitting on clouds. That wasn't where I came to it, right? Um, but. The, the issue for me when we have these long, you know, conversations uh, and, and we're saying, 
you know, oh my gosh, look at all these other things about God and look at all these other conclusions that we need to draw from this thing. But at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're just like equivocating between God and the concept of love and the experience of love that we have. I think the reason that I'm unconvinced is because you haven't actually defined or clarified anything novel. You've just literally told me this water bottle is the same thing as this coaster. And I just I just know that that's not true. I know that that's not tr true demonstrably, right? And and so like you cannot tell me that God just is love because then what you're saying is like two weeks ago when my neighbor got a bunny rabbit and I pet the bunny rabbit for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, I love you. You're so fluffy. Like I could have said, oh my God, I got you. And that doesn't make any sense. We know that those two concepts are different and that's why we have different terminologies for them. So if, if that's all we're doing at the end of the day with our conception of God, then again, I just say that that fails, right? It, it's at least mm -hmm. a little bit better than the outright contradictory version of God where it's like, if two or more believers ask uh, anything in my name, it will happen. Because that's real easy. We just get two Christians together. We're just like, pray for anything. And then when it inevitably fails, it's, well, there you go. So, um, but yeah, I, we're, we'll, we'll let you have, we'll let you have a last thought, Harvey. Um, I want to try to grab one or two more of these calls if possible. So. Yeah, it's too bad because I feel we're, we're making progress. Yeah. I, I yeah, never, yeah. I, that, I never really, I, I didn't really mean, I don't even think I have actually even said that God was love. I think the concept of God that I was um, portraying is just almost like a Buddhist perspective, like just having no concept of it all. Just God is whatever God is. It is what it is. It is what it is. I wouldn't use yeah, the term he because God wouldn't have. Yeah. Been. Yeah. That's a, that's um, a tautology that, that, you know, is, is, Again, I, I think kind of like what Seth said earlier but, with a different caller, where it's kind of a dodge of of what the actual conversation is. You know, we're not really delving into what this God is. And so therefore, again, we haven't moved the needle in terms of justification for accepting the claims. It almost um, falls into, you know, what people are looking for language to talk about the uh, transcendent beauty mm -hmm. of the universe. And we often lack descriptors to talk about the things that move us in the most meaningful ways, whether it's our grasp of the cosmos or a beautiful sunset or the birth of a child or whatever. And so that we might say that, you know, this moved me in a spiritual way. And I, I sense that you might be using God language like that, a way to describe maybe the unknown, the mysterious, the transcendent, the things larger than us, the great unknown. I'm not totally convinced that's that's the language that's best to use, but it sounds like you're on a journey. It sounds like you're being pretty honest with yourself about what you do and don't believe. And in the same vein, I say, keep asking questions, stay curious. And if you find something out for sure, something concrete, have your people call our people. Okay. That's right, Harvey. Mm -hmm, absolutely. If, if, if I can, just for one last second, I just want to go, can I just go back to my original question uh, quickly and just sure. in on it? You got 15 seconds, Harvey. Yeah. So, okay, perfect. So, so I asked why you so convinced there's not a God. And, you know, we kind of pointed out, well, maybe in, a lot, in, in some way, in a lot of what I'm thinking, uh, maybe I am an atheist. But I'm also, I would never be an atheist to the same extent that you're an atheist, because you guys are convinced there's not a God, where I'm just like, you know, any any concept of God is possible. I don't tend to agree with the concepts that are, commonly pre presented um sure. you know I, just just it, as a there, just as a clarity it, just it, as clarifying here harvey i don't say that that all conceptions of god are are not true right i i don't take that stance i i take the stance that every conception i have ever come across fails in some way it, it i i am absolutely still leaving open the possibility for the black swan I have not I have not ruled out black swans as being possible, right? All I've simply said is currently all of the swans we've seen are white, white, white and white. And so most likely any other swan that we come across is going to 
to follow that pattern. And that's just the same with the concepts of God. So yeah, sure. There could be a concept of God out there that I just haven't come across. That is 100% uh, logically uh, uh, valid, you know, uh, and sound. But, but I, think uh, the point is to not I haven't seen it. To not have a concept of God. Like yeah, but that's a, but then, the but then you have to, but then you kind of have to go back to your question of why aren't you convinced that it's like, well, because I literally don't have a concept. Uh, but Harvey, thank you so much, man. I, I do think this was a good call and we, we were making progress. Um, give us a call back in the future. Definitely. Uh, Cause I, I, I think we could, could uh, make even more progress. So thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for giving us a call. Harvey. You know, relating to specific gods, if God made Adam, in his image mm -hmm. and adam had a foreskin does that mean yahweh had a foreskin like this is this is i'm so glad you said that and one of the reasons is because i get to i get to mention uh dr francesca stavrakopoulou's book god and anatomy because i think it is so i had never heard of this concept that we do actually have ancient rabbis like writing down them arguing about whether or not God had a foreskin. This is a real thing. People used to do this. They used to ask each other that. And that just, that just blows my mind, Seth, to think about that, that a thousand, 2000 years ago, that's what people were doing. Like this is the stuff that occupies my mind. Right. 